Adarsh is a Python geek, always on lookout for challenges to solve. Uh, while in college, he co-founded multiple startups, one, one of which was incubated by Startup Village Collective and seed funded by uh, Corella Startup Mission. He got the opportunity to pitch his idea at Facebook HQ in Silicon Valley, and currently working on building Strollby, a travel platform powered by Python microservices and GraphQL backend. Um, he started Speaker Journey by presenting at GraphQL Summit in 2022, and now he focuses on enhancing uh, the Python GraphQL ecosystem in his leisure time by contributing to several open source projects. Um, in addition, the co-speaker who uh, isn't here today, Abby M. Joseph, he's a product engineer at UST working in the travel domain with keen eye for detail and a desire to improve. He's currently exploring more in the Python microservices and GraphQL uh, ecosystem. And currently he also holds a Bachelor of Tech uh, Honors in Computer Science Engineering. Um, Adarsh is also available for a Q&A in Venulus. His pronouns are he and him. And everyone, let's give a round warm of applause for Adarsh. Hey everyone, uh, good afternoon. So uh, I'm Adarsh. I'm working as a product engineer at Strollby. At Strollby, we are building a travel platform designed to revolutionize people's travel experience. Today, I'll be talking about meta programming in Python using meta classes. So uh, we will start with an introduction to meta programming, some meta programming example in Python. Then uh, we will move, or, uh, move onwards to meta classes, their usage, their examples, and alternatives. So let's start by uh, uh, looking at what meta programming is. So it's like uh, the potential of a program to have knowledge of itself or to manipulate itself. It's like code which can modify code. So in Python, uh, there are some common uh, patterns which are using meta programming. Uh, these are like decorators, descriptors, meta classes, and uh, introspection. So uh, Python is actually a very flexible language. So there are uh, many libraries and frameworks using uh, meta programming capabilities of Python to give us powerful abstractions. For classes, Python have a specific support for meta programming, and we will be discussing those in details. So uh, you might have heard that uh, in Python everything is an object. So uh, let's look at an example. On the left, you can see that we are assigning an, a variable called number a value, then uh, we are looking what type is that. So it's uh, class int. On the right side, we can see a custom defined class called plugin. We are creating an instance called audio plugin. On checking the type, it's giving, uh, it's an instance of class plugin. So uh, in multiple other languages like uh, C++ or Java, we have primitive data types like int or str. But here we can see that number is an instance of class int. And uh, similarly, audio plugin is an instance of class plugin. So everything is built uh, as an instance of some other class. So we'll uh, go into details in the coming slides. Next, uh, these are some common examples of meta programming in Python. Uh, these include decorators, descriptors, and meta classes. Uh, first, we have decorators. Decorator is a Python de design platform, uh, design pattern, which allows to modify the functionality or alter the functionality of Python functions at runtime. So this lets us uh, dry up our callables. Like, uh, there can be some common code, like for logging or exception handling and all. So we can wrap that into a uh, convenient decorator and use that in multiple places. So here is an example. Uh, we have an exception handler decorator. Uh, it uh, basically catches type errors, and instead of uh, just raising that, it's just uh, logging the error. We can report that error somewhere. So we can see uh, it's applied to an add function. So when we are uh, passing the wrong arguments, instead of uh, raising the error and stopping the execution, it will just uh, log a warning message with the function name. Similarly, uh, we can decorate classes also. So here is an example of singleton pattern in Python. Singleton is a design pattern. Like uh, we will restrict classes to have just only one object. So uh, this is a decorator which uh, helps us with the singleton pattern. We have a, uh, initially we have a special variable. We are using, uh, we are initializing underscore instance attribute of the class 
and we are setting it as none. So uh, whenever we are trying to create an instance of the class, we will check if that special variable is already present. If it's present, we will just return that. If it's not present, we will uh, create a new instance and store that in that uh, underscore instance variable, then return that value. So we can uh, see that in action. Uh, we, are uh, we are marking our plugin class as a singleton. Now uh, we are creating one instance called plugin1. Uh, similarly, uh, we try to create one more instance, plugin2. Uh, looking at their IDs, they both are the same. Since uh, we have wrapped them using our singleton, uh, in, both, uh, in both of the cases, the first instance will be returned. So uh, they both have the same ID. Next, uh, we have uh, descriptors. Descriptor is an attribute value that has uh, one method implemented using the descriptor protocol. So basically, uh, it's just uh, used for extending the functionality of a class attribute or an attribute of an object. So these are used uh, widely in Python. Let's uh, see an example. Here uh, we have a class called read-only attribute. It's a uh, class which implements the descriptor protocol. Uh, we have uh, the get and set random methods of the, uh, of the descriptor protocol Im implemented in our read-only attribute class. Next, uh, we have another class plugin. So plugin one has an attribute named attribute one, which is an instance of read-only attribute. So uh, next, we will uh, create a new plugin from uh, the plugin class. So uh, once read-only attribute is instantiated as an attribute of plugin, uh, it's considered a descriptor. So uh, we can see that when we try to access the variable x, x equal to new plugin dot attribute one, uh, automatically the get dunder is getting called. So uh, it's just printing, uh, it's just printing a message and returning the value zero. So uh, the message is getting printed. So uh, in this way, we can uh, customize the behavior of class attributes. So when we, if we try to set some value, like uh, if we try to set new plugin dot attribute one equal to 10, it will raise an attribute error because the set under will be called. Set under of our uh, descriptor class will be called. So uh, we have mentioned about dunder methods. So dunder methods are uh, named so because they start and end with double underscores. They are also called magic methods because uh, it appears as though they are called by magic. So, uh, but they are not called magically. They are just called implicitly by the language at specific times that are well defined. Next, uh, these are some of the dunder methods present. Uh, we have seen some of them in uh, Brett's talk. Like we, uh, we have talked about the subdunder, which is invoked when uh, we use the a minus, we use the uh, minus like subtraction syntax, a minus b or something like that. Uh, next, uh, before moving to meta class, let's take a look at the class creation steps in Python. So these are uh, the things that happen when the keyword class is encountered in Python. So initially, uh, the body of the class is isolated. Uh, this includes the statements and functions de uh, we defined in the class. Next, uh, the namespace dictionary is, pop uh, is created. Then after that, uh, the body is executed, and the namespace dictionary is populated with attributes, methods, and some additional uh, useful info. So the namespace dictionary is like, uh, it stores all the attributes de uh, we define, all the functions of the class, and also we can uh, see an example later with more detail. Next, uh, we have the last two steps. In the last two steps, for each class creation, the meta class of the class is identified, and then the meta class is called with name, basis, and attributes of the class to instantiate it. Uh, by default, type is the uh, Python's default meta class. Uh, we can see that in an example. So we have uh, told about the type multiple times in this talk. Type is the built-in meta class of uh, Python. It's the parent of all class. We have uh, two usages of type. We can call it using one attribute. A type of an object, if it's called with one attribute, it will uh, return the type of the given object. Also, we can call it with uh, th three attributes, uh, name, basis, and attributes. So it will return a new data type, or it will return a new class. So uh, this is the second usage of type. We can specify the name. 
the name will become the name of the newly created class. Basis will be a tuple of base classes from which we would like to inherit. Next, uh, dict is the class namespace. This can include uh, the class attributes and functions defined in the class. So uh, this is an example. On the left, we can uh, see a simple class definition. We have a parent class plugin, and we have a subclass subplugin uh, with an attribute and a function. We can, uh, we can get the same functionality with the code on the right side also. Uh, we, are, uh, we are creating subplugin using uh, by calling type. On the first argument, we have the name of the class, that's subplugin. As the second argument, we have uh, a tuple of bases, that's it, it's inheriting from the plugin class. And uh, as the third argument, we have uh, the namespace dictionary or the attributes, which are equivalent to the code in the uh, left itself. So uh, this is used in cases where we need to create classes dynamically. So uh, let's try to uh, look at the attributes of the class. So when, pre uh, it's, uh, when we are printing the class dunder variable, uh, it's returning the class type. Uh, on looking at the basis dunder variable, it uh, returns the base classes, which is the plugin class. Next, uh, let's print the dict, so which will be the namespace dict we, uh, which we provide. So this contains uh, the print ID method, the sub plugin ID attribute, and some other uh, special uh, variables populated by Python. Now uh, let's move on to meta classes. So uh, we we already said that in Python everything is just an object. So our classes are also just objects. Meta classes are a way to create and customize classes. So uh, in Python the default meta class is type, and types type is type. So uh, you can get a uh, clarity from the picture. We create uh, objects from classes, like object is an instance of class. Similarly, we use meta classes to create classes. Classes are instance of meta classes. Uh, here we can see uh, we have defined a class and created an instance. Uh, the type of audio plugin instance is class plugin. When uh, checking the type of plugin class, it's giving the type type. That means uh, Audio plugin was created as an instance of plugin. Similarly, the plugin class was created as an instance of default meta class in Python, that's type. So uh, the type of type is also type. Next, uh, a meta class is uh, a class whose instance is another class. So meta class is used to create other classes. So in, uh, in such a mechanism, we can modify the behavior or we can extend the behavior of classes using meta classes. So uh, these are the steps for writing custom meta classes. We will uh, create a subclass of the default meta class type. Then uh, we will add the new meta class into the class creation process. So uh, we will be modifying some of the random methods like init, new, prepare, and call, etc., to modify uh, the default behavior. Next, uh, like uh, we, uh, we took a look already on the class creation steps. Similarly, uh, there is an order in which uh, the meta class and the meta methods are invoked. So these are, initially, uh, when we are defining a class, interpreter identifies the parent classes, then uh, it defines the meta class, then uh, the following are the order in which some of the meta methods defined in the meta class are called. Initially, uh, there is a dunder, uh, dunder method called prepare. So uh, it will return, uh, it will initialize uh, the namespace of the class. It will return a dict-like object uh, with the class namespace. Next, uh, the body of the class is read. After that, uh, the new dunder is called. So new is the constructor method. It, uh, it will return the created class object. Next, we have the init method, which initializes the class. So uh, at this step, the class is considered to be created. Uh, next, uh, let's take a look at uh, new versus init dunder. So new is responsible for creating a new instance. It will return a new object, whereas init is used to initialize the object with some values. So here is an example of a meta class. We are just uh, printing 
the various variables at the meta method level to get more clarity. So we have the prepare method. Uh, we are printing the uh, meta class name, uh, class name, and the basis name. Next, we have the new dunder. Inside that, we are calling the name, basis, and the namespace dictionary. Now, uh, in the init stage, uh, we are printing the class name, and we are also adding a new attribute uh, with uh, named new attrib and assigning it a value to. Now, uh, let's create uh, a new class A using the meta class as meta. So uh, the previous, uh, the custom meta class we defined. Here we can see uh, inside the class A, we are uh, adding an attribute, attribute equal to zero. Next, we have a simple method defined. So uh, on running the code in the interpreter, we can see uh, the three lines are getting printed. So uh, on defining a class itself, we are not creating an instance of something. On defining a class itself, the meta methods are invoked. Initially, the prepare is invoked uh, with the name A, which is the uh, name of the class. Next, uh, the new method is getting called. Uh, we are not inheriting from anything, so base are empty. Next, uh, we have the namespace. It contain uh, our attribute value defined here and the method defined here. Next, uh, the init is called for the class A. Next, after all these steps, we are trying to print the namespace dictionary of the class uh, using a dot uh, dict. Now we can see uh, a new attribute also is appeared. Uh, we have new attribute uh, value set to two. This, is, uh, this has happened because the init of the meta class uh, was run after this step. So uh, in such a manner, we can add additional attribute or uh, in all these cases, uh, we can use init to add, add additional attribute or we can restrict or customize uh, the steps in which uh, new classes and objects are defined using meta classes. So uh, the next question is when to use meta classes. So meta classes propagate down class hierarchies. So uh, when a parent class uh, is defined using a meta class, their child class automatically use the uh, meta class of the parent by default. So it's mostly about uh, wrapping or rewriting. If we need to rewrite or wrap functions, we should use decorators. If we need to wrap uh, symbol classes, we need to use class decorators. And uh, if we need to modify class hierarchies, we will be using meta classes. Next, uh, we will take a look at uh, some of the alternatives of uh, meta classes. We have class decorators. Class decorators uh, can be used similar to uh, meta classes, but uh, they, their usage do not propagate class hierarchies. So if you are defining child classes, we have to repeat the decorators everywhere. So uh, in the starting, we, can, uh, we have seen a singleton pattern using class decorators. So this is the implementation of uh, singleton pattern using meta classes. We can uh, use both of them to achieve the same result. So here uh, in the meta class, we are storing a variable, underscore instance variable. And uh, similarly, as we did previously, we are keeping a track of uh, whether the instance is already present. If it's present, it will be returned, else new one will be created. Next, uh, there is pep487. So uh, it was created for uh, simpler customization of class creation. So uh, some of the most common uh, use cases for meta classes were uh, running some initialization code after class creation, then initializing descriptors and keeping the uh, definition order of class attributes. So uh, the first two use cases are uh, simply handled by PEP487 without needing to use meta classes. So uh, this introduced uh, two new hooks, an edit subclass hook. So uh, this will run at the initialization of all subclasses of a given class. Now, uh, let's see an example. This is an example of uh, class registration using meta classes. In most of the libraries, uh, there might be a need uh, to track usage of classes, like uh, where, uh, where are our parent classes are used. So uh, we can see, uh, look at the initial parts of the code. It would be uh, considered this as uh, def defined in some library. We have a registry, and we have a register function to uh, add some classes. Uh, to the registry. We have a parent meta class, and we have a parent class. So uh, on uh, this new dunder, we are calling the register function. So in this way, 
Whenever our parent class is inherited somewhere, we will, uh, this method will be called and we will get the value in the registry. So uh, consider this as user-defined code or uh, user-defined classes. We have child one and child two inheriting from parent two. So on printing uh, the registry dictionary, we can see that the library will get uh, track of all the child classes defined of this parent class. A similar uh, implementation can be done using PEP487 init subclass also. So uh, this is a similar code. We have a class parent. So uh, this is an init subclass hook. So this will get called whenever a subclass for this uh, class parent is defined. We have uh, child one and child two inheriting. Uh, we have the same result here also. When user defines a classes inheriting from some parents, it will be automatically added to the registry. So uh, this is a classic quote uh, by Tim Peters regarding meta classes. So meta classes li are like deeper magic, uh, which 99% of users should not worry about. So uh, by seeing the above use cases, most of the use cases of meta classes are uh, already solved by alternatives. So we will be uh, we will use meta classes when we need to propagate class hierarchies. And also, uh, this PEP487 was, PEP was introduced in 3.6. When some libraries need to, uh, need to keep the compatibility with multiple Python versions, they might need to use uh, meta classes in that case. Now, uh, let's take a uh, look at a few examples of meta classes in action. Uh, we have the ABC in standard library uh, to make uh, abstract classes. So uh, to create abstract classes, we, you, uh, we inherit from ABC defined in standard li uh, library ABC module. ABC is using a meta class called ABC meta. So it will uh, hold a registry of all abstract methods of the class. And it will check uh, if all abstract methods are implemented on uh, its instance creation step. So uh, here is an example. We are creating a base plugin. It's an abstract class with an abstract method called getconfig. If we cre uh, try to create a child class and try to create an instance of the child class, uh, it will raise an error because uh, the abstract method getconfig is not defined in the uh, concrete implementation. So under the hood, uh, this is the uh, code of ABC meta. So uh, here the new dunder is overridden and uh, it's, uh, it's computing the set of abstract methods of the class. and when a, new, uh, when a new object is created, it will check if all the abstract methods defined here are implemented and will uh, raise an error if not. Next, uh, another example is enums. So enums are, uh, in Python, enums are also implemented in a different manner. Uh, we create enums by inheriting from uh, enum module in the standard library. So this have been added in Python 3.4. So this is a sam uh, sample enum. We are creating an enum as a class. We are inheriting from enum. Now uh, let's uh, check the type of class title. The, uh, the type is not enum. It's returning enum meta. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is an example of meta classes being propagated across class hierarchies. Enum is created from a meta class called enum meta. So its child will also be using the meta class as its parent. So uh, why enums uh, should use meta class? In case of enums, uh, we are not, use, not creating instances. We are just using attributes directly, like uh, we are using attribute access. We have subscript, uh, subscript access, and we can call uh, the enums by value. So this is uh, a method signature of enum meta class. We have uh, so many dunder methods, uh, get attribute, get item, len, uh, contains, and all. So, this will uh, help us with the enum operations uh, we have mentioned here. Next, uh, looking at the code of enum, uh, it's very simple. There is not much uh, operation happening at this level since we do not create object of this class. There are just uh, representation uh, and string and uh, symbol functions only. Next, uh, we have the final example, Django models. In Django, uh, we will use uh, Django models to represent our uh, database as Python classes. Uh, we have a musician class. We, uh, we define the classes. Uh, we define the fields, and we will define some constraints. Similarly, uh, we, can, uh, we can specify some other relation, like a foreign key relation. The uh, at, artist is related to 
the musician class. So uh, this is a uh, foreign key relation in SQL. So uh, this is a source of uh, Django, Django model. It's using a meta class called model base. So inside the model base, uh, there is multiple uh, modification of the attributes are happening. So uh, some uh, in the new, in the new Danda method, uh, it's getting the uh, user defined attributes in the in the ATTRS. Uh, in the method call. So Django is, uh, Django is modifying a lot. Initially, it will uh, check if contribute to class is defined. Then uh, it is separating that for uh, further operation. And all the normal attributes, uh, it will be uh, passed to the new class creation. So uh, Django does some kind of registration. It keeps track of all the operations, all the fields, their constraints, and uh, it will be used for uh, converting our queries at runtime into uh, SQL queries. Next, uh, these are some more things to explore in Python meta programming. Uh, we have seen some examples from Richard's talk. Uh, we can uh, handle code as abstract syntax trees using the AST module. Similarly, uh, the this module can be used to compile uh, to bytecode at runtime. We have the inspect module uh, to view the inter interpreter stack at runtime. So uh, these are the references which uh, inspired for the talk. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you.